Hello, welcome to the Angerati studio here at European Utility Week. I am joined by Thomas de Gank, who's the marketing manager uh, from Itineris, uh, who are an ERP company, I, th I think is probably the right way of describing you. Uh, and because they uh, provide a lot of the back-end processes for uh, uh, the utilities who, who are visiting here today, uh, I wanted to ask uh, Thomas, uh, so what are the sort of main challenges that you're seeing that uh, utility companies are grappling with mm -hmm. uh, that, that are coming through to your business? Well, actually, the challenges that utility companies are confronted with are manifold. First of all, we have the changing customer demands. For example, our consumption is changing over time because of uh, incentives given by government to reduce the level of consumption. Secondly, there is a stronger need of compliance. Controlling is very important. Thirdly, you have the smart meters getting in, in, uh, in uh, uh, their entry in the market. Um, and of course, all those changes, they need to be well addressed. And actually, I think that uh, utilities need a sort of uh, a, high, a high level of flexibility within their system. That's, that's one side. But flexibility not, uh, should not come, uh, how should I put it, um, without any conditions. They still need to be in control as well. So on the one hand, they need flexibility within their systems to, to handle their process and to address those changes. But on the other hand, they stay, need to stay in control. And uh, in my mind, is it, aren't those two positions actually sometimes incredibly hard to reconcile? Because Definitely. if you have flexibility, control, you know, they, they, they come at the problem from two different yes. angles. So and, and you see the need for pr uh, flexibility. Mm -hmm. um, how they how they approaching it then? Well, on the one hand, you can control, of course, your business by having the, the, the pretty well defined roles and tasks and validations processes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But of course, control is one thing, but it cannot crumble you. It cannot. Uh, it, it should. It should. It, yeah, yeah. yeah. It cannot strangle you in, in in doing business. So it should help you actually in order to do your business even better. So, for example, by having installed a control framework where, of course, roles are defined, tasks are divided within the company that everybody knows what to do, but also by having a pretty well structured data, at that point in time, you can really make work that control framework to enhance your business and even create a sort of profit out of it. Just give you an example. You can structure your data based mm -hmm. on customers. Customers can have a low value or a high value within your company. And, for example, that customer, uh, low value customer doesn't pay his bill. How are you going to address that? You can create certain processes to address that type of customers, but you can also address, for example, with a high-value customer, instead of sending out a letter immediately saying, hey, you didn't pay your bill, you could actually give him a call and say, hey, is something wrong? Or maybe he's just on holiday. So instead of, of, of having standardized processes, everybody the same thing, you can create sort of control framework which generates processes depending on customer value, for example. And at that point in time, con a control framework is actually helping you to run your business. And, uh, 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 and is that way of managing the customer, that to me doesn't sound like it's any different than what retail organizations have been doing for years. Sure. Where, where is, uh, are you saying that that approach is new to the utility world? Actually, it's not a new, uh, a new um, philosophy. But it's something where uh, actually uh, lots of ERP solutions do not immediately uh, respond with. So you need a, a very uh, extensive BI or business intelligence uh, framework for that. And that's something that is not offered to the market uh, from a standard perspective. It's something that is always tailor-made. And that's logic because utilities have their own way of addressing certain groups of clients. Some are more interested in the high value clients, some are less, uh, are focusing on the less value clients or lower value clients. But isn't that BI almost getting easier because we're now in the world of big data, which is um, a, a, a separate subject? Well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I agree with you, slightly overhyped, but, uh, well, uh, quite a bit overhyped maybe. Um, uh, but uh, the premise there is that you can actually take data, put it into a data pool, and analyze it with business intelligence or... or, or uh, That's true. It, it analysis is one thing. Mm. But actually, when, when you're analyzing, you're always analyzing historic data. It comes to having the data at actually actual real-time data. So that uh, as, uh, at every angle or every point in time that you have a certain view, what is happening within your company, and that is what is actually being in control. Because analyzing data from a historic point of view is just having a photo. 
and analyzing a photograph. Having data at hand in a Royal Taylor dashboard, for example, for your customer care manager who's, who needs to know how many calls are still in line waiting, how, many, how long do people get, uh, how long does it take how, before people get through our, to our call center agents, that's one point of view. But your finance manager, he needs other data. He needs to know what is the margin, the margin contribution of a certain customer group. And for example, your CEO, CEO wants to know how are we doing on our strategic plan of cost reduction, for example. So what you're saying is by having the smart grid, you could join that entire flow of data up in real time to the consumer that when people are looking at those dashboards, and we are probably talking hypothetics here slightly, but when people are looking at those da dashboards, they're as near to or as close to real time dashboards rather than the History hey, data. give me last month's report, sure. and you get last month's report 30 days into the new month, so by the time you can react to it, it's the third month down the road. So you're always behind schedule, actually, mm -hmm. but with smart data, of course, you need to translate that data, because you're going to get data every 15 minutes, every hour, every maybe two hours, maybe every minute. At that point in time, is it relevant to have, like, uh, how should I put it, meter data every 15 minutes? What are you going to do with it, with it in, within your company? Isn't that too much? At a certain point in time, you need to address your client in a correct way with correct products. What are you going to do? Every change the product every 15 minutes because it's... Actually, you're the second person who's, who's made that point about uh, how much data is being collected and what data is being collected. It should and be that, relevant. Yeah, I mean. it's, uh, it's interesting because mm -hmm. uh, do you think that there is, because there is the ability to connect everything, that at the moment uh, to a degree a lazy decision is being made well listen we can't store everything let's just store everything and we'll figure out what to do with it later mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, actually you could have uh, the more data you have the better it might might be but actually what are you gonna do with the data and I think it's you need to start um, talking the same language with it in between uh, departments or within companies and say hey actually we think that within the market that data might be of interest for utilities or for the great company, or for certain processes. So, so from where you're sitting, where you, where you uh, supply the framework um, uh, and so on, um, not necessarily want you to give away, uh, uh, you know, any any uh, any secrets. But mm -hmm. uh, can you hypothesize to some sort of interesting uses of data and this type of information flow that? either has or you think potentially can give a competitive advantage? Mm. Well, um, let's take a B2B utility supplier. Um, you have contracts with companies uh, that are um, need to be renewed every one, two, three, four, five years because these contracts are all always tailor-made. You could do that and pull up data every month and say, hey, which contracts are going to be renewed? But you could do it in a, in a different way as well, is that, for example, um, actually every now and then, through the cloud, maybe a sales manager is going to upload a new contract. This should be immediately shown up to the marketing and sales director for the B2B activities and say, okay, we are at the level of 30% of the renewal rate now. So maybe we should push more or lower our incentives or we get how much promotion did we give on those contracts. So, th so all those data need to be actually uh, analyzed immediately so that he could take proactive uh, actions and to steer his sales managers or sales people, sales representatives, and send them out messages saying, hey, okay, stop the number of reductions. We're, we're on our level for this week. We need to increase, we need to decrease. So uh, from that point in, in, in time or from that perspective, I think that um, for utilities that could generate a sort of competitive advantage. Because obviously what we've, we must put that into context. We aren't just talking about five or ten different renewals, no. we're talking about a huge, huge, huge amount, huge it's a load. Here. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you another question as a, as a segue. Um, uh, you've spent a day uh, presumably on the, uh, on the, on the show floor uh, mm -hmm. uh, looking around and uh, uh, you know, from your time in the industry, what have you seen around you? On, I don't know whether you've had a chance to uh, consume some of the uh, uh, conference sessions. What have been the, the, the one message that, that's really gone, uh, where you've gone, oh, that's interesting? Uh, well, I think um, the cloud and smart metering is, is imminent, so that, that that's going to come. Actually, there's still some insecurity on 
which standard, what about privacy, how are we going to handle that? That's something that you still feel. But actually, utilities are, are not waiting for that. They say, hey, actually, we are looking into solutions that give us the flexibility and give us a first mover advantage to, uh, in comparison to the other utility company. They are actually looking for a low-cost uh, alternative for the traditional ERP solutions. That's something that we feel that today is uh, actually one of the, 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 the main tendencies they're looking for the low-cost alternatives in the market and uh, in solutions that can support them in a flexible and a controlled manner. So they're, they're trying to drive, drive down their costs. Uh, Definitely. Tom, Thomas, thank you, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, uh, and uh, we've come to uh, the end of our time at the, this thank interview. You. Uh, thank you all to, for watching. Um, we're very close to the end of the first day of uh, uh, European Utility Week and uh, there are a few more uh, interviews to come but uh, you can watch all of these and more uh, as we go on uh, through the months on engerati.com so thank you for watching.